I love sequence questions because this is the best way to challenge your brain to detect the pattern. You're presented with three numbers in a sequence where fourth number is missing and you need to identify the next number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 159. Choice B, 179. Choice C, 139. And then choice D, 193. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the real test. On my end, I'm pretty sure that you've solved it by now and I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think the pattern here is that the next number is calculated as previous number multiplied by 2 minus 1. The first number in the sequence then is 25. Next number will be calculated as 25 multiplied by 2 minus 1, which would be equal to 49. Number after that will be calculated as 49 multiplied by 2 minus 1. And then the missing number will be calculated as 97 multiplied by 2 minus 1, which would be equal to 194 minus 1, and then the end result of it would be equal to 193. So I believe that the correct choice here is choice D, 193. Do you have a different solution? Please make sure to post your answer in comments. Here's an amazing question which tests your analytical skills, logical reasoning skills, as well as your knowledge of employment process. You need to arrange the words into a logical sequence. And the words are phone interview, job search, employment start date, job application, in-person interview, create resume, and last one but not least is an assessment test. You have four different choices, choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. What's interesting about this question is that answering it will not just help you to test your skills, but also will help you set expectations about a job search. Let's move forward and get to the my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. In the typical job search process, after preparing the resume, job seeker can start searching for the job and apply for the job position. This is called job application process. After an employer determines the match between the position and the resume of the candidate, candidate is called up for the phone interview and then for in-person interview. The next step in the process is an assessment test. If candidate passes job interview and an assessment test, job offer is made and then person starts on the job. So the correct choice here is choice B. Starting with the creation of the resume, then going and doing job search, then applying for the job using job application, then going through the phone interview and in-person interview process, going through the assessment test, and finally starting on the new position. Do you see it differently? Please make sure to post your version of the solution in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is an amazing question to test your analytical skills. You need to calculate the missing number. You are presented with triangle, which is split into three equal or almost equal parts. At the bottom of the triangles, on each side, you see numbers 8 and 2. In the middle section of the triangles, you see numbers 4 and 6. And on the top of the triangle, you see number 3 on the left. And on the right, you need to calculate the missing number. You are presented with four different choices. Choices A, 6. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 7. And choice D, 2. Do you see the answer? I'm going to give you a quick hint here. You need not to guess the number, but you need to calculate it. Let's move forward so we can get to the correct solution together. I keep repeating it on this channel, but the fundamentals are solid. You need to always look for patterns in these types of questions. And there are actually two patterns here. The first pattern is that each row adds up to 10, and vertically value add up to 15. 
So for example, if we add 8 plus 2, that would be equal to 10. 4 plus 6 would be equal to 10. And 3 plus the missing number would also be equal to 10. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an unusual question to test your pattern recognition skills as well as spatial reasoning. You are presented with 3x3 three three matrix which has shapes inside and you need to find the next 3x3 three three matrix in the sequence. You are presented with four different choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I would recommend that you spend no more than 15 to 20 seconds thinking about this test. This is about as much time as you get in a real assessment. I'm pretty sure you figured it out, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I'm probably not going to surprise you when I say that to solve this challenge, you need to detect the pattern. And each shape here has its own pattern. For example, because we have three different shapes inside 3x3 three three matrix, we have circle, we have arrow and we have triangle. We need to look at each individual shape and determine pattern for each individual shape. Let's start with the arrow. Arrow alternates in color, changes from black to white and also rotates 90 degrees, staying inside the same middle square of the matrix. The tricky part here is that arrow rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise with every step. Now let's look at oval. Oval moves to the next corner counterclockwise. It starts in the upper left corner in the matrix 1, then moves to the lower left corner in the matrix 2, and then moves to the lower right corner in the matrix 3. Triangle alternates the color, changes from black to white, and also moves into the next middle section counterclockwise. If you follow all of these patterns, you will realize that the answer is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning and analytical skills. You're presented with four different shapes and you need to determine which shape doesn't belong to the group. The choices are shape A, shape B, shape C and shape D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. My guess is if you are a viewer on this channel or a subscriber on this channel, these types of problems should be very easy for you. So I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. But obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. A lot of people complain here that I always say one simple thing. Find the pattern and use it to solve the challenge. This is very true for this type of challenge as well. If you look closely, you see that there are multiple patterns present here. The first pattern is that there is a large black shape which is surrounded by the square and pentagon. Both square and pentagon are of a different but the same color on all the objects. So the first pattern here is that the black shape increases the number of sides from 5 pentagon to 6 hexagon to 7 heptagon in objects A, B and C. So if we continue this pattern, we should see the next shape in the shape D to have 8 sides, which it does not. So we are already immediately getting the clue that the shape D might be different. Let's look at other shapes. If you look closely at the square, you see that the square jumps in object A from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock and then jumps to 4 o'clock. So it is possible that square incrementally goes around the clock counterclockwise and increments corner by one. You can also see that rectangle alternates between medium and large sizes when it moves counterclockwise from the corners. If you look closely, you also will see that the blue pentagon moves half of the position clockwise. It moves from object A 4 o'clock position to object B 6 o'clock position and then to object C 8 o'clock position which means that the pattern holds for objects A, B and C. And object D is out of pattern and does not belong to the group. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an unusual question, but we're starting to see it on the test more and more often. You need to select three numbers which add up to 52 
and there are eight choices to select three numbers. You have numbers 7, 24, 33, 5, 9, 11, 17, and number 12 presented for selection. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. See if you can pause this video to get to the correct solution. I am pretty sure you figured it out, but just in case, I am moving forward to get you to the correct answer. As you might have guessed, the correct numbers are 7, 33, and 12, because 7 plus 33 plus 12 equals 52. Keep in mind that this may not be the only solution. A lot of times, in questions like this, there are other options available. Do you see any other set of numbers that lead to the required result? If you found another possibility, please make sure to post in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. I hope you will be as amazed as I am when looking at this question. You're presented with three sets of diamonds. Each set contains numbers outside of the diamonds as well as inside the diamonds. Let's look at the first diamond. It has numbers 2, 4, 16, 22, and then there is a number in the middle, 44. The second set of diamonds contains numbers 3, 9, 81, 93, and 186 inside. And then the last set of diamonds has two numbers visible, which are 5 and 25, and three numbers missing. You need to select the missing three numbers out of four possible choices. Choice A, 495, 720, and 970. Choice B, 625, 655, and then 1310. Choice C, 780, 935, and 1935. And then the last but not least is choice D with 545, 610, and then 1000. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Typically you get between 20 and 30 seconds on the real test, so feel free to pause this video if you need more time. But on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you see a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Nothing new here with this question. And my advice to you as usual, always look for patterns. Let's look at the patterns here. If we number the corners of the diamonds as well as the middle with the letters of the English alphabet A, B, C, D, and E, we can build a pattern. And the pattern will be B is calculated as A multiplied by A, basically A square. C is calculated as B multiplied by B. D is calculated as A plus B plus C. And then E is calculated as C multiplied by 2. Let's look at the example. If we look at the first set of diamonds, the number at the bottom of the diamond is 2. The number on the left is calculated as 2 multiplied by 2, which equals 4. The number on the upper side of the diamond is calculated as 4 multiplied by 4 and equals 16. Then the number on the right is calculated as 16 plus 4 plus 2 and equals 22. And then the number in the middle of the diamonds is calculated as 22 multiplied by 2 and equals 44. If you follow this logic and do this calculation, you will come up with the choice B. And choice B is represented by the numbers 625, 655, and 1310. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question for you to practice. You need to identify all the words with similar meaning. And you're presented with five different words. The words are leader, lender, lather, coach, and influencer. Do you see the answer? Keep in mind that there could be between two and five answers. So make sure to give yourself a little bit of time to process this question. And when you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. 
Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an extremely tricky question, but I have full confidence that you'll be able to solve it. You are presented with the sequence of circles, which is also organized in a circle. Sequence starts with the red circle with the number 56 inside. Next circle has number 114. Following it, circle with the number 232. Then circle with the number 470. Then circle with the number 948. Then follows the circle with the number 1906. And then comes the circle with the missing number. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. What's interesting about this problem is that all circles have different colors. And some circles have the same size and other circles have different sizes. But regardless, you need to select one of the following four choices. Choice A, 3812. Choice B, 3824. Choice C, 3820. And then choice D, 3800. As I mentioned, this is a tricky problem. But regardless, I'm moving forward to reveal the final solution to you. And as usual, what I'm sharing is just my version of the solution. So feel free to share yours in comments. You might be tired of hearing me saying it all the time, but pattern is the key to solve this challenge. And different shape sizes and colors are introduced on the objects here in the picture just to confuse you. So let's look at the pattern. The pattern here is previous number plus the sequence number multiplied by two. And you have to add previous number to the sequence before doing multiplication. So let's look at the simple calculations. The first number in the sequence is number 56. If we add 1 to 56, which is the sequence number, then multiplied by 2, 57 multiplied by 2 is 114. Let's do the same thing to number 114. 114 plus 2 multiplied by 2 equals 116 multiplied by 2, which is 232. So our final number, 1906, plus 6, which is the sequence number, multiplied by 2, equals 1912, multiplied by 2, which equals 3824. If you liked my version of the solution, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Here's a tricky question which tests your knowledge of English words. You need to identify all the words that are synonyms to the word large. You're presented with 10 different words. Enormous, petite, insignificant, mammoth, minuscule, colossal, huge, powdered, gigantic, and dissolved. The tricky part here is that there could be between 1 and 10 answers. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can process the question. Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. But obviously, if you have better solutions, feel free to share in comments. I found five words that are similar in meaning to the word large. Let me share them all with you. The words enormous, mammoth, colossal, huge, and gigantic are similar in definitions to the word large. Enormous means very large in size. Mammoth means huge. Colossal means extremely large, as well as the word huge has a similar meaning of extremely large. And then finally, the word gigantic means item of a very large size. And finally, something you may or may not know. Practicing questions like this not just helps you increase your English dictionary, but also increases your IQ. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support, and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.